I'm so excited for what God is going to do today. Amen. There's victory in this place today. Amen. Breakthrough and victory is happening in this place today. Amen. Victory over any scheme of the enemy in your Amen. life. You will receive today. This is what God is going to release to you today. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm, in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. Amen. Say victorious. victorious. Say I am victorious. I am victorious. I have the victory. I have the victory. Amen. 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 This passage is powerful. Amen. It says that there will be days of evil. It says that we are struggling. We're in a war, but it's Amen. not against physical people, things, it's against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Amen. It's right there. It's no secret. Amen. It's no secret that there's a there's a battle happening. It's no secret that, that the devil's out there. It's no secret that the devil doesn't like us. <laughs> it's no secret that he's going to try to attack us, try to, to defeat us. But Amen. it also is no secret that we have the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Always. Amen. Amen. When we do what he commands us to, like put on our full armor of God. Amen. You know, we don't just naturally have the victory without doing anything, but we have to apply what he's taught us in his word. Amen. Amen. Then we can have victory in every single battle. God Amen. wants you to know that you can have victory in every battle. Amen. You do not need to fear the enemy at all. Amen. You do not need to fear any situation that's in your life that's going to overtake you. No, you have the victory through Jesus. That is your right. Amen. That's what he died for, for you to constantly have victory, to, have, to be a champion, a reigning champion all the days of your life for his glory. Amen. You're co-champions with him. Amen. You're co-victorious with him. That is your portion. That is the truth. And don't let any, any lie of the enemy tell you anything differently. Amen. Glory to God. But we need to be alert and to aware and be aware to the fact that we are in a spiritual war. Amen. Today I'm going to teach you how to how to be prepared to win. Amen. Glory. How to be there's a preparation that needs to take place in you to win through Christ, to have victory. A preparation must take place. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in here, it says that there are schemes and then there's strategies and there's deceits of the devil. There's specific schemes, there's specific strategies. Okay, it also says that there is an evil day. So there is a certain appointed time where these things may happen, where this battle takes place. Amen. It's not every single day. It's once in a while. As we see with Luke 4:13. In the NLT version, it says, When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Amen. So when the devil was in the wilderness with Jesus, tempting him, 
after he went to war, after he was defeated by Jesus, he left him for the next opportunity. Amen. Does anybody have their Bibles on them? Can someone look up this, this same verse in the King James Version? And can someone read it for us? While he's looking it up, the King James Version, Luke 4, 13. While he's looking it up, I want to I read to you the Passion's Translation. It says, that finished the devil's harassment for the time being. So he stood off a distance, retreating until the time came to return and tempt Jesus again. You have it now, Herman? Uh, yes. We have a mic for you. King James Version. Luke 4.13, King James Version. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For a season. One last version. I'm going to read the message version to you. That completed the testing. The devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity. This is how the devil works. Amen. Jesus is alive inside of you today. So this is how the devil uh, had war against Jesus in the time when Jesus walked the earth. Praise but God. where is Jesus today? Inside of you. Amen. Yes. Amen. So the devil has the same, same strategy as he did back then, today. He's yes. trying to go after the same Jesus in you. Amen. So the same strategy of leaving and coming back for a different time, a different season. This tells us something very powerful, that we need to be alert, Amen. that we need to prepare, that we need to be aware. Praise God. Now, I know, I know when you first have victory over some sort of battle in your life, you're like, thank you Jesus, I have the victory. Oh, that was such a crazy spiritual war I was in. I know the last thing you want to do is think about, okay, he's coming again for another season. Woohoo! Right? right? It's our, naturally, especially living in the physical world, as soon as a battle's over, it's like, done, I have victory. I don't want to think about that again. I don't want to think about it. I'm not thinking about it at all. That's how we live, pretty much. I mean, that's not fun to think, okay, I have to gear up for the next battle. You know? Yeah. But we really do need to be alert and aware. Amen. And prepare. Now, we need to change our attitude, though. You have the victory all the time. So, it is scary and depressing to think about, oh, I have this battle coming up, but I'm not sure if I'm going to win, and it's going to be really hard. But when you can change your perspective, have the mind of Christ, renew your mind, Amen. To think in the spiritual realm, the spiritual truth of, I have another battle coming up, but I have the victory whenever it comes. It's time for preparation season right now, just like in sports, just like boxers. You know, it's time to prepare. I need to get, I'm going to get strong. I have another battle coming up. I'm guaranteed victory. And this battle is taking me to the next level. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because that's what God uses battles for. God allows spiritual warfare. So it's not something that we need to like freak out about and get all ruffle our feathers about it. It's okay. God's allowing it. That means that it's okay. You're going to get through it. You have everything you need to get through it. You have the power of God Amen. inside of you to get through it, to have victory. Amen. He uses these battles to shape you he uses these battles to mold you, to grow you, to mature you. It's part of your testimony. It's part of your story. These battles are important. Amen. You can't be a champion without a battle. They're important to your story. They're important to your life. They're important to your faith. This is how your faith is stretched. This is how you grow. Amen. So God wants you to have this perspective of to not forget, to not fall asleep. And then when the devil comes, you're like, uh oh, what happened? And you don't know what's going on. You know, 
We need to renew our minds. Amen. Renewing your mind. We're going to go to that verse right now. Romans 12, 2, Amplified Version. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Passion Translation says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Hallelujah. He calls us to renew our minds continually. Amen. Amen. Meaning, get out of the physical mind that you've put on by living in this world. And put on your spiritual mind. Amen. Remind yourselves of the spiritual truth. Renewing your mind is like updating your phone. Amen. If you don't update your phone, it starts doing weird things, glitching having problems. And sometimes you hit the remind me later button, uh, like on the computer. Ah, oh, I'm busy, I don't wanna do this right now. You hit remind me later, remind me later. And then you start having all these issues, your computer's not working, your phone's not working, and you don't know what's going on. And then it dawns on you, oh yeah, I was supposed to update my phone, and maybe if I had done that earlier, I wouldn't have had a single one of these problems. That's how renewing your mind is. That's good. Amen. You need to have an update, update. You, you know, when you don't do this, you can feel really down. Like, what, what, what happened to me? Like this spiritual war I had before, I was strong, and my faith was, was strong, and, and this time, and I remember, I remember I grew, but this time I feel, I feel like I went backwards. You know, I feel like I forgot the things that I've learned, which is a lie. I cancel in Jesus' name. But you start to, those thoughts start to creep up when you're not renewing your mind. That's it. Amen. When you're not reminding yourself of the truth in the spiritual realm of what's going on. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have to be on the defense. Amen. If you think about like sports, like a soccer game or basketball, you're on the defense. You're 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 ready. You're not you're not gonna let that person get by you. You're ready. You know they're coming. Amen. Amen. So we have to be on the defense spiritually. Amen. It's not a depressing thought of oh no this battle is coming, but it's like I know I'm in a spiritual war right now, and I know that that day is coming again. The word says it. As the devil said, devil said he'll be back for Jesus at a different time. There will be another time for me, and it might look like something different, but I'm not going to be shocked and surprised when it happens. When you're not on the defense, you'll just be kicked down on the ground, the devil will be kicking you, and you're like, I don't know what's happening. Have you been there? Where you're like, what's going on? Why is this happening? And this happening? And this happening? And it takes, it takes you then, then having to go in the Word, then having someone encourage you, then to be like, oh yeah, I'm in a spiritual war. Oh yeah, the devil was going to come back at a different time for a different battle. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, I'm doing powerful things in the kingdom. So the devil sees me like there's a target on me. Amen. Oh yeah. Right? Amen. God doesn't want us to have to do that to be beaten down, on the ground, struggling, depressed, thinking the world is caving in on us, and then remember, no, he wants us to re renew our minds continually so we don't have to get to that place. Amen. So we can all already be alert and be like, okay, this is the season right now. Battle. I'm going to have the victory. I'm going higher. Woohoo! You know, it doesn't have to be some dreary, horrible disaster when a battle comes. Amen. You can be like, yes, time to go forward. No big deal. Amen? Amen. 
Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Now in those days, a decree went out from the emperor, Caesar Augustus, that all the inhabited world, the Roman Empire, should be registered in a census. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to register for the census, each to his own city. So Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he, ha he was of the house and family of David in order to register with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was with child. Now, this was about one week before Mary gave birth to Jesus. So she is really pregnant, and she has been expectant and so excited for to give birth to the Messiah, and she's been feeling the favor of God over her, rejoicing, with, celebrating with Elizabeth, and she thinks for sure everything's going to go smoothly, of course, the last week. I mean, for sure the favor of God is upon her. But then this happens. This unexpected thing happens where they have to travel 90 miles to Bethlehem. Not in 2019, where we have luxury vehicles, planes. No. Back then, she was on a donkey with Joseph. Mm -hmm. It was cold, it was in the desert. 90 miles, it would have taken them between four to seven days. Just walking the entire day. Imagine nine months pregnant, one week away on a donkey. This is no simple thing. No. This Amen. is awful. If if this was horrible, <laughs> what she had to go through, and what Joseph had to go through, the stress of that all. There was also like robbers and people out in the desert. They had to watch, keep watch for. Amen. It looked like, where is God? It looked like, what could be worse? But this was a prophecy fulfilled. Amen. Amen. This was all part of God's plan. This wasn't the world crashing down on them. This wasn't them losing a battle of the enemy. This was God allowing this battle, this circumstance, for his prophecy to be fulfilled. For the perfect plan that he had written before they, way before they were born. For that to be fulfilled. Amen. This journey they were going through, they apparently didn't know about this prophecy. They apparently weren't very versed in the, the Old Testament at that time. Because it's written in Micah 5.1 it says, But as for you, Bethlehem, Eph Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you one shall come forth for me, who is to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth appearances are from long ago, from ancient days. Right. There's the prophecy. Back in Micah. They apparently didn't know that scripture. It might have helped encourage them. Oh, maybe this is what's going on now. They obviously didn't know this prophecy, or they would have made a journey to Bethlehem long ago. She was one month one week to birth, giving birth. Amen. Amen? So if you put yourselves in their shoes in those days, they must have been like, this is the worst thing that could happen. Where is God? But God was smiling above. This is my perfect plan. And, and little did they know that we would be celebrating this part of the story. This exact part of the story we read in scripture, we have in books, we have in movies. Every single year at Christmas time, it is such a beautiful thing we celebrate. Look at what God did. Look at how God fulfilled his prophecy. Look at how God gave them victory and protected them. This was just part of the story. This was just part of the journey. This was just the uphill part of their journey. Yes, come on. 
And, and, you know, God uses these things to strengthen us, to strengthen our faith. Mary and Joseph, they had to be molded. They had to be groomed. Their faith had to increase. They needed to learn how to rely on God because of what was to come ahead. I mean, soon after, Herod's trying to kill their son. is killing every little baby boy. Amen. So then an angel has to appear to Joseph, and then they have to go and hide in Egypt. That's terrifying. <laughs> right? Amen. That's scary. And then all the persecution, everything that happened when, when Jesus began his ministry, when he went to that cross, Mary had to be strong. Joseph had to be strong. Amen. Their faith in the Lord had to be strong. Amen. Amen. Not to mention their responsibility of raising Jesus. Amen. This Amen. is something we don't think of very often. We usually think, oh, Mary was obedient to say yes to the angel. But her obedience was just not a one-time thing. That's right. Her obedience was every single day of her life as she was faithful to raise Jesus, to be strong, to keep encouraging him in the Lord, encouraging him of the prophecy that was given to her by the angel, raising him to love Jesus, being a pure vessel, making sure that he would be this strong, wonderful, amazing man of God. Amen. 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 Because Jesus was 100% human. So Amen. the same way that we raise our children today, the effect that we have as parents, when we shape, how we shape them, the effect that we have on those children, how they'll be a man or woman of God, the effect that that has, the same effect worked for Jesus because he was 100% man. So Mary and Joseph had such a responsibility to have their own personal relationships with God, to be strong in the Lord, to have a strong faith, to believe that God could do the impossible, to believe that God would get them through hard things. Amen. So this is the way that God molds his people, makes their faith to grow, Amen. to be stronger is through these circumstances where we feel like all, like hell is breaking loose. But really, God is delighted. He says, this is how you're going to be strong enough to do the mighty things that I've called you to do. Only this way. Amen. Come on. So, him allowing that circumstance, allowing that census to be forced upon them to have to go to Bethlehem, that was all part of God's plan. Amen. He knew what he was doing. He knew that, that they, were, they were learning to rely on Jesus through that journey. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. So, part of the preparation, preparing to win, it's really renew your mind. If you want to know the simple thing, renew your mind. Amen. Amen. Renew your mind. Get in the spirit. When things are going good, it's hard to get in the spirit. I mean, we praise God, but we, we forget to like see in the spirit because we're praising God for the good things and we, we neglect going into the spirit and, and, and seeing in the spiritual realm. Amen. Amen. So... When things are going good, when things are not going good, whatever, however your life's going, you need to continually renew your mind, change your way of thinking, make it aligned to the word of God. Remind yourself we're in a spiritual war. Um, that a battle will be up ahead at some point, but you will have victory. Amen. So part of renewing your mind is, is changing your perspective to think about the way that that God was shaping Mary and Joseph on their uphill battle, the hard thing they had to do. That was a blessing for them. That was all a part of his plan. Amen. Amen? So that's part of renewing your mind right now is to, to look at your circumstances differently. Amen. The 
they're just temporary. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, if you have lack in your life, if there's bills that you don't know how you're, you don't know how you're going to pay them, renew your mind and think what's really going on here. The enemy wants, to, the enemy is trying to tell you that you're going backwards or that maybe the word of God isn't true, that, that Jesus has come so that you may have abundance, that the lack is not your portion, that poverty is not your portion. That's what the enemy is speaking. Amen. And these are the lies you have to cancel. Amen. You have to rebuke. Amen. You have to resist those lies. Amen. You have to say, what's really going on here? You know what? This is temporary. This isn't my portion. It wasn't Mary and Joseph's just portion to be nine months pregnant, one week away, freezing in the desert on a donkey, beating off robbers, walking every day. That wasn't their portion for their life. That was just one week of their life. It was just something they had to pass through so that they could be molded and be lifted and have victory. That was just a battle. Amen. Just like being in the boxing ring. That's not fun. People are getting beat up. Blood's going places. That's not fun. But that's just a battle so that the, the victor's crown may be put on the head. You know? That's not something you're doing 24 days, 7. So this thing that you're going through right now, it's not your portion. You're not staying there. God is only allowing it because he's using it to lift you. He's using it to mold you. He's using it for your good. Amen. He loves you too much to, to, to not, to just allow something that's going to hurt you. That's not the God that you have as your Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. He's doing it for a purpose. It is all for good, for he works out everything for the good according to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. 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 So that's number one, is to shift your mindset of this thing is temporary. I'm getting through it. It's for my good. Okay? Number two, um, I want to talk about right now the schemes of the enemy. This is how you prepare part of the preparation, prepare to win. To know what his schemes are. So when they come towards you, you know what's going on. You're not confused. He doesn't catch you blindsided. Right? Um, right. The, enemy, the enemy looks for your weaknesses, just like in boxing. Like they'll look, okay, what is, what's the rest of their weak arm or their, what's their weakness? Where's the spot that I can hit? You know, that's what the enemy does. He looks, where is your, your weakness? So pay attention to that. Maybe you feel insecure about something. And then all of a sudden you just feel like you're getting attacked in that area. You feel like words of the enemy through other people or just voices in your head keep speaking that insecurity that you faced for a long time. If you're not in the spiritual realm, if you haven't renewed your mind, you'll say, well, it must be true. But if you can renew your mind and go into the spiritual realm, you can see, I see what's going on here. This insecurity about myself, it is not true. It is not who God says I am according to his word. You know what? I've dealt with this insecurity before. You know, God has helped me overcome this. He's shown me that this is, this is not true about me. That this is the truth about me. That I am strong. I'm a powerful vessel of God. I'm beautiful. God has good plans for me. I'm lovable. Whatever it is, any kind of insecurity you have, you say you, you found that that wasn't truth. So when you see later, you start to hear those voices again in some way. And you can go in the spirit and say, I see what's going on here. This used, used to be a weakness of mine. I'm not claiming that's a weakness of mine anymore, but it used to be. And the enemy was watching. My opponent was watching, just like in the boxing ring. They study other, any kind of sport. They study their opponents and they see, how can I win? What's the weakness? How can I catch them off guard? Amen. So the enemy studies has studied you 
So you need to know this, that when you hear those lies coming, you say, ah, I know the schemes of the enemy. Amen. He, he, he's trying to go after my weakness. This isn't his first rodeo. This isn't his first battle he's trying to win. So he knows to look where the weakness is, that that's his avenue. Mm -hmm. So now you can say, ah, oh, I see what's going on here. Rather than being in the carnal physical realm and being like, woe is me, what's happening? Man, everyone's speaking this thing to me, this is not cool. No, the enemy's just back for a battle. Amen. And once you know that, you're like, oh, it's just him? This small little devil trying to come after me again? Well, that's no big deal. I know the truth. Amen. I have victory. That's it. Where we don't have victory is when we don't go into the spiritual realm, where we don't renew our mind, and where we, we're like, oh, I don't know why this is happening. Maybe this is true. Oh, and then you're so distracted by all those lies. You're consumed with distraction. You're yeah. consumed with the lies. So, one of these schemes of the enemy is to distract you so you don't have time or energy to do the work of God and to be strong leaders for the ones who really need you. Here at Advanced Anointing, this is a powerful anointing that's here. Amen. Revival is now. Revival that's going to spread across this entire world has begun here. Amen. It's begun with you. Amen. That is the truth. You carry powerful anointing. Amen. Amen. And what you've been called to do is stand strong with this anointing. Be a vessel of God. Release this anointing so other people may receive this anointing. May receive Jesus and receive his healing and deliverance. Amen. That's your calling. That's what you've called to do. Amen. That's what pleases God the most. That's what God wants more than anything to happen. And that's what the enemy doesn't want to happen more than anything in this world. Amen. Is that right there? Amen. So Come now on. we're talking about schemes, okay? We need to understand the schemes of the enemy. He doesn't want you to be strong. He wants you to be distracted so you cannot be a powerful vessel of God to others. Amen. Amen. You already have it inside of you. So he, but he wants you to think you don't have it. He wants you to think that you cannot do what God's calling you to do. He wants you to think that you can't be this strong, powerful vessel of God. That's what he wants you to think. That's a strategy he has. So he, you will hear lies of the enemy come at you in different ways. Amen. Maybe it's your gifts. You have certain gifts that you want to serve God with. Various gifts. And maybe all of a sudden you start hearing lies from other people or yourself or just in your head that you aren't good at this or you aren't good at this or you're not a help when you do this or whatever it may be. That's the enemy's strategy to make you think, okay, maybe I can't really be used by God powerfully. Maybe I can't use this gift. I don't know how I can be used. Those are lies of the enemy. Amen. And we need to catch them. Amen. This is how we prepare. We're preparing right now by knowing the lies that will come. Amen. He'll also try to distract you in your personal life. M make you think that you don't have time or energy or anything to give to God, to give to the church. But we know that God has given us all the provision that we need, everything that we need, all the time that we need. We have everything that we need inside of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So these, these schemes, be aware of. Be aware of ways he's trying to distract you to be used as a powerful vessel. 
And number two, look at me. He's going to try to destroy your self-confidence. Amen. And your confidence in God as well. Amen. Try to make you think that the promises of God for your life, for this ministry, for this anointing are not true. He'll try to speak that to you through different circumstances. Spot the lies. Amen. Cancel them. Amen. Confess the truth. A big part of renewing our minds is to confess the truth. Confess the word of God. Speak the word of God. Speak God's promises over you. Amen. The ones in the Bible and the word, the words prophetically, mm -hmm. rhema, the words of today. Amen. The ones that God's that God's spoken to you personally and the ones that God has spoken to us corporately. It is important we confess them. We speak them. We say, this is the word of God. I declare this is the truth. This is my truth. Amen. This gives power inside of you. Faith rises inside of you when you confess. This helps to deflect the, the voices of the enemy. So when the voices of the enemy come, when the lies come, it becomes easy for you to spot quickly that it's a lie because you built up the truth so much inside of you by meditating, by speaking the word, by meditating and renewing your mind and by speaking the truth. Amen. Amen. I also want to tell you, though, another scheme of the enemy is, is to try to get you to cancel your positive confession. Mm. Amen. Amen. This is a scheme of the enemy. This is a secret. This is a secret of the king, one of the secrets of the kingdom of God right here. Amen. Is that when you speak a positive confession, maybe it's testimony, maybe it's God's done this for me here in this ministry, or I found this here, God did this, whatever it is, that you testify, God has done this. It's like you're signing something in the spiritual realm. It's you've made it like for sure this is what's happened. You've made something concrete. Well, the enemy hears you speak that. He sees you've like signed your signature on that. So what he then goes to do is he goes and finds a circumstance, as we read earlier. He finds a certain circumstance. When this circumstance arises, he comes back to you and says, will you still sign this? Will you still speak this? You sign right here. Will you still speak this? What I mean is, let's say you had a breakthrough in some area, let's say you had healing in your body, and then, and you confess it, and then months later, pain comes back, and you start doubting, and you start, oh, maybe that thing that I spoke, maybe God didn't actually do it, maybe it wasn't really healed, maybe I was wrong, I'm confused, I don't know what's going on, I don't know, oh, I guess God didn't heal me. So, the enemy creates this narrative tries to get you to go back on your word. That's when there's not a victory. Amen. Amen. But there's victory when even though there's still pain, even though pain came back, you say, no, I, I am healed in Jesus' name. Whatever this is, it doesn't not mean that I'm not healed. I am healed. Amen. By, by his stripes, I am healed. So I know whatever that is, the pain, whatever, it's going away. Because I am healed. That's what God has done for me. Amen. I am healed. Or maybe it's provision. God came through with you. You had this provision. And, and all of a sudden now, you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. The enemy is like, will you, will you still speak this? That God is your provider and that he will provide for you every single need you have. Will you still speak that? When we still speak that truth, despite our circumstances, that's when you have victory. Amen. So this secret I'm revealing is powerful. 
powerful tool for you to have inside of you. Yes. To know this scheme, this strategy, as it says in Ephesians, so that you may be able to stand up against all of the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. This is a strategy. So with this knowledge, the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Amen. With this knowledge, you will have victory from today. Amen. With this knowledge, you can say, I know what's going on here. There's strategies, there's schemes, there's the seeds of the devil, and I've learned what some of them are. So I'm prepared now. So when that comes, I'm not giving in. Amen. I'm continuing Amen. to speak. Stand by my word, which was the word of God. Stand by my word, the testimony of Jesus. Amen. I will stand by it no matter what it looks like out there in my life in the physical realm. I will stand by my word. Amen. Mary and Joseph stood by their word and says, God is faithful. They didn't give up. They kept going in the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Amen. A couple things I want you to know about, it's like kryptonite that you can keep inside of you. It's like the power inside of you. If you can keep these things in our hearts, this is what gives you victory. Number one, believing with all your hearts what God has promised you, individually and corporately. When you can meditate that this is truth, what God has spoken is truth, I will stand by this. If you can make sure that that faith does not leave you, Amen. that is a key to having victory. Amen. Amen? Amen. Number two, believing in yourself. Believing in the God that's inside of you. Believing that God adores you just as you are and that he wants to use you mightily. Amen. This is a big one. This Amen. is a big one. Because the fact that God is mysterious and we can't see him and sometimes it's hard to hear him. He comes as a still, small voice. Come on. Because of that, the enemy loves to speak lies of the fact that you're not really connected to God, or maybe God's not speaking to you as much as other people because he doesn't love you as much, or, or maybe, God does, maybe God's not proud of you, or maybe he will come with so many lies Amen. just trying to bring you down. Making you feel like, you, I mean, you see other people and you glorify them in your mind. You lift them up. I mean, you see other people serving God, being used powerfully by God, and you lift them up in their mind. You put them on a pedestal. Like, you think like, oh, I don't think I hear God like that. I don't think God, I don't think God could ever use me like that. These are lies of the enemy. Amen. Everyone struggles. You know, everyone, it's not, don't, don't look at someone's, don't look at someone's confidence and zeal for God and disqualify yourself. Amen. Amen. Because you have it inside of you. It's just lies of the enemy that are trying to make you think you don't have it. Amen. The zeal of the Lord, the confidence of the Lord, it doesn't just happen naturally. I don't have zeal for the Lord or confidence just naturally. It came from renewing my mind a lot. Come on. Amen. It came from looking at the word of God, believing that it's truth, listening to prophecies I've received from my spiritual father, and, and reminding myself of them, writing them down, hanging them up on my wall, repeating them, speaking them out loud. Amen. Amen. It came from doing that a lot. And I'm still not perfect. It's still not perfect. I still hear, hear, I still will hear those lies. I still will hear those lies. Like, you're not good enough. Or, God can't use you powerfully. Or, I 
why do you got to hear those lies? These are strategies of the enemy that we all face. Amen. Making you feel like you're not connected to God. You're connected to God. He lives inside of you. Amen. Amen. It's okay if you're not hearing crazy, big, audible voices. Yes. He, be still and know that I am God. He says, be still and just know, meditate on the fact that he is alive inside of you. Amen. That he loves you so much. That sometimes he is quiet. Sometimes we have to seek him out. We have to seek him in his word. We have to make quiet time just to hear just like one small feeling of peace. And that's all he's speaking for the day. That's how it is. And God just wants me to communicate this to you so much because he wants to use all of you so powerfully. But you're, sometimes you compare yourself to others or sometimes those lies the enemy get in, like you're not good enough or you're not doing enough for God, you're not praying enough or reading the Bible enough or, or there's a problem with you because you're not hearing God very much. You know, you're quiet and you don't hear anything. And you think there's something wrong with you, or you think that maybe God doesn't love you as much or something. I rebuke those lies in the name of Jesus. Amen. The, because this is the strategy of the devil, I'm telling you right here. I've had to, myself, I've had to overcome this. I've had to overcome this by, by remembering the truth Amen. in his word, and the prophetic words to me. That's the only way, is to renew my mind with the truth, with the word of God. Because you are a bright light. Amen. There's a bright light inside of you that the world needs. Amen. And it's all going to look differently. Not everyone's going to look like me. God wants to use you in a different way. But you have the same Jesus inside of you. You have the same light inside of you for this world. That this world needs. It's going to look different. Be okay with being you. God made you to be you, just how you are. Amen. Just how you are. Amen. All of the gifts, all of the imperfections, the way you look, everything, the sound of your voice, everything, he designed perfectly. And because the world needs it, because there's some people only you can reach, I can't reach, or other people here can't reach, but you can reach. And God's made you perfectly. He's put things inside of you. He's given you life experiences so that you can touch those people. He's had you go uphill battles like Mary and Joseph so that you can touch those people that no one else can, can reach but you. But to reach them, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta know this truth that God wants to use you. Amen. He wants to use you powerfully. Amen. There's nothing you have to do. That's Just right. rest and trust him. Let him work through you. We can't see ourselves. We don't know how powerful we are. Amen. You don't know the people that you've already touched so powerfully and changed their lives. People have even received Jesus through you and, and, and they didn't even tell you. And you have no clue because it's hard to see ourselves. And because those lies of the enemy, those lies saying you're not good enough, you're not doing enough, you can't be used by God. They tend to overshadow. So we have to be, renew our mind. Believe that God wants to use you powerfully just as you are today. Right now. Today. He's Amen. proud of you. He adores you. Amen. Just as you are. Amen. You have everything you need to be a powerful vessel of him to this world. Today. That's the truth. Glory. The enemy Amen. does not want your light to shine. And God needs all of you. He needs an army. Not just one or two people. He needs an army. Amen. Amen. We need to know this strategy that the devil does not want your light to shine. He wants you to think you're not good enough. When we know this strategy, we can have victory. 
Because we know that those voices that we're hearing are lies of the devil. Amen. Amen? Amen. I want to remind you all of the prophetic word of 2019. Some of you might not have heard it because you weren't here yet, but our spiritual father, Prophet Joe Davy, the founder of Advanced Anointing, who is in Tanzania, East Africa, he prophesies a word of every year, so there's one coming up soon for 2020. But he prophesies a word for the year, and it's for anyone who will receive it. Anyone who hears it and receives it, it's your word. Amen. And so the word for this year, you know, 2019 is not over yet. So God wanted me to remind you all of the word of this year. It's still yours to claim. It's still yours to receive. The word of the year was that it was the year of expanding our capabilities. Expanding your capabilities. And the scripture that Prophet Jordani gave was the story of Joseph. Joseph, son of Jacob, who he, he gave the story of, you know, Joseph was in, in the pit that his, that his brothers put him in because of jealousy. You know, Joseph was, Joseph was given this big dream that, that his, his brothers would be bowing, bowing down to him. He was given this dream. He shared the dream. His brothers were insanely jealous, so they threw him in a pit. They then sold him to slavery. He then went to Egypt, was a slave. He then ended up going to prison. He was put in prison because a lie was made up about him. So he's in prison. So this dream of his seems very far away as he's in prison. But God sends these two people to be in jail alongside of him. He ends up interpreting their dreams. They end up getting out. Then Pharaoh has a dream and he needs it interpreted. A long time later, one of the guys that was in prison tells him, oh, there's this dude who's in prison who can interpret dreams. So Joseph gets brought out of prison because God gave Pharaoh a dream. God orchestrated this plan to give Joseph his breakthrough. Amen. Amen. When it seemed like a breakthrough was nowhere in sight. It seemed like this dream that God had given him was as far away as it could be. Then he interprets the dream. Pharaoh gives him so much favor. He's second underneath only Pharaoh. He gives him all this power and favor. Part of the dream that Joseph interpreted was that there was going to be this huge famine. So Joseph is sent to collect grain. To gather grain, tons of grain, because when the famine hits, there's not going to be enough food for people in several different countries around. So God gives this strategy. God sets it up for Joseph to reap a tremendous harvest. By God instructing through the dream, someone needs to go collect grain. Joseph ended up being sent to collect grain. So he collects all this grain, collects all this grain, and when the famine comes, all of these people from, from so many countries across are coming to Joseph because Joseph has the one thing that they need. So they are paying him to get all of this grain. This last part of the story right there is the, is the part of the prophetic word of 2019. That it is, it is your year, 2019, of, like Joseph, collecting grain, collecting valuable things that people need in this world. Amen. So that at an appointed time, 
There would come a time where people would wake up and see that what you have, they desperately need. It is the only thing that they need on this earth to survive. And you have it. Amen. And they would come to you for it. Amen. God would direct them to come to you for it. Amen. That's, that's your word. Amen. Take that as you will. And I know I, as I take this, this is for our personal lives and corporately, so I take this here, we take this here at Advanced Learning to mean like doing the work of God, serving faithfully. We're storing up the grain. We're becoming stronger and stronger, building up our faith, being, building up the anointing inside of us so that we can release it to the world when they want it. Amen. When people come Amen. saying, I see change in your life. I see miracles you've testified about. I need that for my life. I'm going through this and this and this, and, and I think I want to try this Jesus that you talk about, Amen. that we can release the anointing to them Amen. and say, here, I've been storing all this up just for you, Amen. for you Amen. to receive it. Amen. 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 So this, is, this year is not done. Let's still believe this word and take this word. That's right. Receive Amen. this word. We have to expect it and believe it to receive it. Amen? Amen. So God wanted me to remind you of this word so you could keep expecting what he has for you, the fullness he has for you for this word of 2019. Amen. I also want to remind you that, you know, God, God had me speak this word for a time, for a certain time. This is prophetic anointing here. So, so the words that come are words that you need right now. Amen. Amen. So I see that there's certain battles that people are facing here in this church. And I, and I see, I see us as Joseph in the pit. Some of you feel like you're in the pit or in prison. Some of you feel like you're prison, in prison with, with just darkness of, of certain situations you're having in life, of battles you're facing. But I want to remind you that the same God that Joseph served, he is working in your life today. Amen. That same God that set up this supernatural dream, it orchestrated this amazing thing to have Joseph be pulled out of prison not just be freed he went from one extreme to another he went from the darkest place to the highest favor Amen. Amen. and to be used powerfully of God he had a light inside of him, of him hidden and he's like why can't anyone see why can't I, I spread this light and in that moment God lifted him up so God wants you to know that your breakthrough is coming now. Amen. It's coming Amen. fast. It happened fast with Joseph. Amen. Out of nowhere, he wasn't expecting it. So some of you, you feel like there's not an end in sight. You don't see the light. But God is saying, it is coming right now. Amen. I am doing what I did for Joseph to you in your life right now. Amen. Amen. I am giving you breakthrough. And just as I put Joseph there for a reason, I put him in there for my glory. So, so people could see how I work in miracles, how I give people dreams, how I do something that only I can do. That's what God did. He did it for his glory. He did it to strengthen Joseph, strengthen his faith. Amen. That's why he, he put him there for a purpose. And so just as he was put there for a purpose, you were put there for a purpose. Whatever it is you're facing right now in your life, whatever it is you feel struggling, you're struggling in, it's happening for a reason. God's doing it for a reason, for his glory. And your breakthrough is coming. Your breakthrough is now. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 If you can raise to your feet. This last part of um, preparing for the victory is practicing gratitude. Yes. I say practicing gratitude because 
If we just thank God just when we think of it, it won't happen enough. To be truly prepared for victory, we have to practice gratitude. We have to make it a practice to thank God. There are so many things to be grateful for that God has blessed you with. We need to go down that list. Amen. We need to go through our head and think, what has God done for me this year? What has he done for me in my life? Yes. Let me go through several of them and just spend some time thanking God. Yes. Just spend some time. This is a part of renewing your mind. Yes. Because another scheme of the enemy is to try to distract you from all that God has done brings one thing that you don't have and magnifies that. That's a strategy of the enemy. He magnifies the one or two or three things you don't have. So you don't have time or space to think about the good things that God has done for you, the blessings in your life. So how do we combat that strategy of the enemy? We practice gratitude. Amen. We spend time thanking him. Yes. We spend, he's worthy of that, amen. We're going to just spend a little bit of time right now thanking God. I just want you to go through the list this past year in 2019, just or in your life in general. Just think about the, the blessings of God. What are you grateful to God for? Just start thanking Him. Start speaking out loud. Little things, big things. Just start thanking Him right now. Your own personal life here in this ministry. Just start thanking Him right now. Thank him. Speak out loud. Speak out loud. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep thanking him. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you, God, for this church. I thank you for advanced anointing. I thank you, God, for every single person that you brought here. I thank you, Jesus, for all the gifts you give to every person that, that they are choosing for your glory, God. I thank you for always making a way for us to worship you here. I thank you for always making a way for people to receive, God. I thank you for being faithful. I thank you for giving me words to speak. I thank you for equipping me. I thank you for equipping every single person here. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this place in Los Angeles, Lord. Thank you for the promises you've made us. Thank you for the prophecies that you've given us. Thank you, Father, that your promises will always come to pass, Lord. I thank you that we can depend on you. Thank you for proving your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Keep thanking him. Keep thanking him individually. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. I thank you, Father, for the surprises. I thank you for the breakthroughs. Lord, I thank you for your joy. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for giving us contentment. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for making it possible for us to be here today, God. Thank you for providing a lunch. Thank you for providing a car for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, for what you've done in this place. We thank you, God, for what you've done in advance anointing. And I thank you, God, for every person you've brought. Thank you, Jesus, for the promises you've made. Thank you for our spiritual father. Thank you for giving us direction. Thank you for the gift of the prophetic words. Thank you, Father. We don't take it lightly, Jesus. Thank you for making a way for us to be here today. Thank you, Father, for providing us a place to worship you in Los Angeles. Thank you, Jesus, for opening doors. Thank you, God, for giving us surprises. Thank you for this anointing. Thank you for miracles that happen in this place. Thank you for healing the people have received here. Thank you for deliverance that people have received here. Thank you, Father, for the people watching online and receiving online far away. Thank you, Jesus, for lifting us. Thank you for this anointing. The joy of the Lord comes with thankfulness. Amen? It doesn't just come, but when we can renew our mind and remind ourselves of the goodness of God. There's so many ways that God has been good to us. 
when we can remind ourselves of this, this, this activates the joy of the Lord inside of us. Amen? Just raise your hands right now. I see as, as you are thanking God, God's releasing breakthrough to every single one of you. Sometimes he wants, sometimes so he just wants us to get to the place of thanking him and remembering his goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I declare breakthrough to every single person here. Whatever tribulation you're going through, I declare victory over you right now in Jesus' name. I declare strength to you, strength in your spirit. I declare your spirit to be strengthened, to be lifted right now. I open your eyes to see in the spiritual realm what's going on in the battle. That you would not feel hopeless anymore or doubtful anymore or discouraged anymore. I wipe away those feelings right now in Jesus' name. I declare the truth to reign in your mind and your heart right now. The truth that you have victory through every single thing through Jesus. The truth that this thing you're going through is just part of your journey. It's the uphill battle. It's the place where you are lifted. It's the place where you receive your victory at the end. Receive the joy of the Lord right now with this truth. Whatever it is you're going through, receive the joy. Receive the peace. Receive the excitement and the expectancy for your victory right now in Jesus' name. I declare provision to every single person here. Anybody who has a need, a financial need, I declare, receive it in Jesus' name. I open the doors right now for that money to come to you right now in Jesus' name. There will be no lack for any single one of you. There will be no eviction for any single one of you. There will be no, nothing that will be shut off for you in Jesus' name. For you live in abundance. I release this anointing of abundance to you right now in Jesus' name. That you would have enough to be a blesser. That you are the head and not the tail. I declare in Jesus' name. Receive abundance in Jesus' name. I declare healing right now. Anyone who needs healing in their physical body, God is healing you right now. I remove a spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. I declare complete healing to your body. Complete healing to your body in Jesus' name. Healing to your mind in Jesus' name. Let, let hope arise in this place. Let hope arise. Let hope arise. Let hope arise, for victory is yours. Victory is your portion. Abundance is your portion. Peace and joy is your portion. You are the head in Jesus' name. You are called to be a leader in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give God a big praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hi, my name is Apostle Catherine. Thanks for joining us on Advanced 19 YouTube. You can click here to subscribe and click here for more videos. Here you will be empowered, your spirit will be fed as you watch the empowering messages. Carry this revival fire, be healed, delivered, set free, and blessed.